Okay, so we're gonna continue what we uh, were finishing up last night. We ran out of light, so I wanted to make sure that you guys can see everything uh, that I'm doing. So I uh, shut it down for the night, and uh, yeah, we're gonna continue right now. So what we were doing last night, we were removing the bolts that hold the pan to the block. Uh, these bolts are very unique to the Explorer setup because the pan is a lot thicker than a regular pan, so these bolts are a lot uh, longer than the traditional uh, oil pan bolts. Um, one of my buddies says he wants the, uh, the timing cover. So what we're gonna do is remove the pan and then remove the timing cover. We tried to remove it earlier, but we realized that uh, there was a couple more bolts holding it in than we anticipated. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these. To the side here, we go from the box. All right, and we're gonna just go ahead and remove this oil pan now. So now that you got the pan off, we're gonna remove this timing cover. Okay. Now see, there's four bolts here. You can see they're broken off. One is broken in there, but these four bolts are what. Uh, attached to the oil pan at the bottom of the timing cover. So. All right, so we've reached, uh, we're getting down to the final stages here of the disassembly. Um, so this is the uh, cam sprocket right here, and this is the crank sprocket. Uh, as you can see, it's got the teeth and everything. And this is the double roller chain. It is really, really worn out. Look how loose that is. I think it probably jumps like hell at high RPM. So uh, we're, we're gonna change that out too. All right, so before we move the crank sprocket and the uh, cam sprocket, we're going to turn this over. We're going to take out the lock. Just turn the motor over. Okay. Lock it again. And we're going to move, remove the, uh, the spider and the uh, lifters. Uh, See, this here is a spider. These are the lifters, okay? All right, and there's little keepers there too, and I'll show you exactly what that is in a minute. So remove these two bolts here, and uh, the spider will lift out, and then you can lift out each one of the lifters, okay? Now these, um, I tend to like to keep them according to their bores, so uh, because we're not most likely not going to be buying new uh, lifters in case. Um, we don't want to buy them, we just want to keep them in order. Now if any of them have any visible damage on the surface of the roller, then yeah, we're definitely going to replace it. But um, what's good about hydraulic roller setups is um, they're not as sensitive as the flat tappet uh, setups, okay? So they don't have like the same engine wearing uh, properties as um, other motors. Now it's very important to keep the uh, lifters in their proper order if you intend on using them. I, I like to do that just because the bores in the block have worn themselves uh, according to the size of this particular lifter. So if I take this lifter out of this bore, I want to keep it in that bore, okay? So let's go through this anatomy here so you guys can understand what's happening. This is a keeper, okay? This is what keeps the uh, lifters from rotating. You see how they got a flat spot on them right here? That's to keep them from spinning like this because as you can see, let me remove it, this is a lifter. As you can see, this lifter has to stay flat this way towards the cam. Now if this is facing this way, if it rotates, it'll actually try to rub against the sides here and destroy the cam, okay? So this is a hydraulic lifter, there's a spring under here uh, that pushes it back up but the oil is what really keeps the pressure in here to keep it pumped up. So this is a lifter and that's a keeper. The keeper stops it from rotating, alright? So, alright, so this is my very crude uh, way of keeping my lifters and everything in place. Um, 
if you don't intend to reuse them and actually this is not really necessary on a roller motor uh, but I just think that practice makes perfect so it's just best to just keep good practices and uh, that way that even when you do have to do it you won't forget alright so back to the block now that we've got all the lifters out of their bores and everything we're gonna go to the front here remove this uh, cam sprocket and we're gonna edge it off and uh, we're gonna go ahead and remove the crank sprocket now we might need a puller to get this off since it's been on through so many heat cycles but uh, it won't be nothing man let's go ahead and knock it out all right, so to remove the cam sprocket, uh, first we're gonna remove this uh, bolt here. It's 14 millimeter. And I like to take a mallet and kind of give it a little love. There we go. Make sure you keep track of this bolt here. We're probably trying down an ARP bolt to replace it, but for right now, you just wanna keep track of your, your parts. Okay, because you, ne you never know what you're gonna have to reuse or whatnot here not gonna have to reuse so here's that let's put that to the side and then I'm gonna take the wrench here and just give it a little dance nothing too nothing too uh, over the top you just want to just tap it a little bit and just just have some patience guys it'll come out you know. okay let's go bam 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 and there it is, okay? So you move your cam sprocket, just like that, with your chain. Chain's kind of tight. I might clean it up and wear it. Dunk yard dogging. Anyway. Okay, so now that we remove the sprocket, as you can see here on the bottom, I don't know if you can see that or not, but yeah, yeah, so now you see on the bottom here is the crank sprocket, okay? Uh, we usually replace these because with high miles, they just get worn. They don't hold the chain well. So, I mean, you could get away with replacing it, but because we plan on, you know, revving this motor, uh, I don't think it's a good idea to reuse it in this situation, okay? So now we're down to the uh, camshaft thrust plate. So there's these two bolts here you want to remove, and then uh, I'll show you how to get the cam out uh, safely, okay? Just in case you want to reuse it. These cams on the Explorer motors are actually pretty terrible, but... Um, you, you know, you just always want to have options, okay? So after you take those out, you're going to remove the th cam thrust plate, okay? Now you also want to check for damage back here just to see if it's got any grooves or anything in it, but um, it looks pretty good actually. Um, when I clean it up more, I'll be able to tell a little bit more what's going on, but so far so good. Now here's the, 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 the thing, I like to put the bolts back in where I got them from just in case so you don't lose them. It's just a good way of keeping track of everything. So to pull the cam out, because everything's all greasy, you're not going to have a lot of grip, okay? So what you want to do is you want to thread the, the uh, well, take the washer off, okay? Thread the cam bolt back in just a little bit and yank on it. Okay, it'll start to give. And as, as it comes out, just get a little bit more. And you don't have to really be careful at this stage because we're replacing the cam bearings at the uh, at the shop. So here, here's the cam. Okay, that's your uh, piece of crap Explorer cam, no power having, just a torque. Uh, this cam is for torque, and it's just you know it's not it's just not a good cam. So yeah, this is gonna go in the junk pile unless one of you guys want it. You can email me and you can have it. Okay, so we're in the final stages of this breakdown. So what we're gonna be doing is taking the uh, rods loose, pushing the pistons through the top of the motor, uh, taking the mains loose and removing the crank and removing the oil pump and the oil pump pickup. Okay, so first to remove the oil pump pickup, we're going to remove this nut from uh, the number three main with a 14 millimeter socket. 
Next, you want to remove the two 14 millimeter bolts that hold on the oil pump, which is located here. And here. All right, so this is your oil pump uh, ro uh, rod. Basically, it, uh, it drives off of the, um, the distributor. It's turned by the cam that's turning the oil pump and then pumping oil up into the motor. I have made the grave mistake before in the past of uh, this rod falling off into the pan, starting the motor and it ate everything in the motor within 30 seconds, okay? See, it slips into that hole right there, okay? Boom. The reason why it's got this cup on it is sometimes it gets caught up on the distributor and when you pull it up, um, this cup is supposed to stop it from coming through the hole and keeping it in place. So, very, very good thing. We're gonna keep this. Um, we're most likely gonna try and track down a hardened one, but if not, we're just gonna go ahead and use this. Now uh, is the time to uh, take out the rods and push the pistons through the top of the motor. So, um, this is the uh, rod cap right here. So you're gonna use a uh, 13 millimeter or half inch socket here. And uh, they're usually not on super, super tight. Because they got a bearing in there so you don't over tighten them because they don't want to crush them. So after you get the bolts off, you're just going to tap, okay, and you see the rod, the piston, the rod, see it, there you go. These bearings actually don't look so bad, but here is a, a rod cap, and see this thing in here, this is a bearing, okay. Now, usually the bearing will have uh, a very nice smooth coating on it, but this one's got quite a few thousand miles on it, so yeah. Okay, so before you push the piston down through the top of the motor, uh, you're gonna wanna, I like to put them on as soon as possible with some rubber, rubber sleeves here uh, to stop it from scoring the, uh, the crank any more than it may already be and scoring the walls of the block as you push it out. You gotta do is push it down, down here, and boom, there we go. There you have it, piston removed, okay? So this is the rod, this is the piston, okay? So we're not gonna be reusing these pistons, these pistons are not forged, but they are, they're pressed. We're gonna be using 5.0 forged forge pistons. Now, if this block needs to be bore 30 over, then we're gonna get some aftermarket pistons. Um, you know, same thing, like I said before, like a used source or something like that. So, um, but you still wanna keep these uh, intact in one piece. So I'm gonna put the cap back on and put it in the parts box. Now, what's great about, uh, and I always say this about the Fords, what's great about it is, is that they, they actually number them. So you'll know what cylinder it's supposed to go back into. All right, so this is one of the pistons I was talking about. You see how it says the number five? So this is how you know this is a number five piston, okay? Um, that's what's what, what I like about Ford. They actually went through the trouble of labeling everything uh, just for your convenience, you know? It's just, okay, so now we're in the final stage here. Uh, one thing you wanna notice about this crank, how freely it spins, okay? Um, that's a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. It's a bad thing because uh, that just tells me if I can spin it that easily that um, the bearings are super worn down. Doesn't matter in this situation because we're going to be replacing them anyway. But another thing I notice here is there's a lot of end play uh, back and forth. Now um, that is way out of spec and that's usually caused by um, a bad thrust bearing here in the middle. Um, there's a bearing here that has um, these two sides to it and when it gets worn down the crank just wants to jump back and forth and it just really makes for a really unstable um, uh, really unstable crank and, and, and rods and pistons. So um, yeah, so we're going to take these 10 bolts here out with a three quarter inch socket and uh, remove the caps. Now the caps are numbered and they have an arrow on them to tell you what direction they should be facing. So. We removed the other mains and we took this main off. Remember I said earlier that the thrust bearing is usually what will cause the uh, crankshaft end plate to be really bad. Well look on this side. It's 
completely gone. Okay, but upon further inspection, what makes this even more grievous is that we look in the crank here and it's grooved. Okay, there's a deep groove there, whereas on this side, it's perfectly smooth, as it should be. So, they uh, really should have rebuilt this motor a long time ago, so it should be smooth. Anytime you see in there, the mains here, it should be smooth, you know? Um, a smooth transition into the next one, but there's a deep groove here. So, that actually just means that uh, this crank is trash. I didn't intend on using this crank anyway because uh, since we're going with the supercharged setup, we're going to go and hunt down a forge crank. Maybe a 331 setup or something out of uh, somebody else's motor or something. But um, yeah, man, I mean, we were trying to, to, to keep it budget friendly, but let's just be honest. If you're building something with performance, you never know what's going on inside the motor until you pull it apart, okay? So let's go ahead and yank this, uh, this uh, crankshaft out. Okay, so now that we got the crank out, uh, we want to put the uh, the mains back in because we're going to have this block line hold because of the severe damage that we've seen on the uh, crank. So we're going to have a line hold because this this is not uh, that's not good, and you got to make sure that everything is perfectly round. So you don't got to put them back in all the way. Just thread it a couple times just to make sure that. Uh, Make sure that they, they don't fall out as you're transporting it. All right, so now we're gonna load the block onto the truck to get ready to go to the machine shop. Now guys, this is why I always stress being in shape and working on motors and everything, because as you can see, I don't have any help and I don't like to wait, okay? So what you like, what I'm doing here is uh, you take out the block, okay? And I usually grab one and number four, and so walk it forward a little bit. I just lift it onto the block. Onto the truck. Okay? Now the last thing that we'd have to take out would be the uh, the uh, stand, the uh, piece of the stand so we could take off this block plate. Because this block plate obviously was bent taken out of the yard, so we're gonna chuck this in the trash and uh, then it'll be ready to go to the machine shop. Back, stand, lock here, and then just take the lock thing loose. All right, so that concludes our engine breakdown for Project Mayhem. Um, so what we're gonna do is send this uh, block to the machine shop. We're gonna have them hot tank it, clean up all the grease and the oil. Uh, we're gonna have them magna flux it, check it for cracks. Uh, we're still on the fence about boring it uh, 30 over or not because um, we want to use the factory forged pistons, but um, if we have to, we'll bore 30 over. Um, the reason why I'm trying to avoid from doing that is, uh, you know, it raises the compression and it also adds to the difficulty of finding the parts that are going to fit right into this. Also, we're going to run a line home uh, to make sure that the, uh, the mains are nice and round since we have that crankshaft problem. And uh, we're also going to just deck the block, just give it a light deck just to make sure that it's nice and flat when you put it in. Um, so yeah, so next time uh, you're going to be uh, checking us out, um, I'm going to be pulling the motor out of the other motor out of Project Mayhem and uh, getting the uh, parts for this, so which means the bearings, uh, you know, the gaskets and the seals and all that other good stuff. So yeah, until next time, we're getting there one episode at a time, all right? Junkyard dogging!